Hello everybody. Welcome to another video by Liminal Spaces. So we're finally getting back to Philip K. Dick. We're going to talk about his story, The Infinities. This was written in May of 1953, and it was first published in a magazine called Planet Stories. And it is super fun. I don't know if I'm just getting more used to these kinds of stories, or if I'm just stumbling across better stories every once in a while. I'm not sure how that's working out, but this is just a blast. I'm really having a great time with this. We did realize that the stories in the Philip K. Dick reprints are not in chronological order. Basically, all four of those big volumes are all like 1953. <laughs> you know, and I'm being extreme. Of course, there's other years in there, but it's all from this same kind of time period. So I can't say that we're evolving through him as a writer, uh, but uh, this story is great. It's super fun. All right, let's get to it. So it starts off with them on an asteroid. They're in a small spaceship. There's three people total. There's a captain. There's an older guy who's kind of jealous of the captain. And then there's a female scientist who works downstairs. So they're on this asteroid that has Earth temperature, Earth air, and Earth water. I don't mean it's from Earth, but it's the exact same conditions that we have on Earth. But the weird thing is, there's no life at all. There's no microbes, nothing. They've got big, huge lakes. Of course, tons of rock on this asteroid, right? And breathable atmosphere, but no life at all. And this is really freaking them out because any asteroid that they go to, of course, they find some kind of microbes or something in this world that Philip K. Dick has created. They always find something but they can't find anything on this asteroid, even though it should be perfect for life. So they've landed on the asteroid. They're looking out the porthole and they're thinking, what is the deal here? What's going on? Uh, and there's a little bit of a squabble between the captain and the older gentleman, because the older gentleman's kind of jealous of the captain. The older gentleman's saying, let's just get out of here. Why did you even stop here? This is, this is supposed to be their last stop, and then they get to go back to Earth for their vacation. And he was like, we could have just skipped it. We could have said there's nothing valuable here and just left. Why did you even land here? And the captain's like, we have to check everything out. You know, it, it is their job. So they have a little bit of a squabble, and... He says, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let the pigs out. So he calls down to the scientist and he says, I want you to let the hamsters out. I want you to keep them on their leashes, but I want you to let them out and leave them out there for about 15 minutes and then bring them back in and do a bunch of tests on them because I don't trust this at all. And she's like, okay. So she hangs up. And they both look out the porthole, but then she calls back like that quick and he answers and she's in a panic and she's like, all the hamsters are frozen. They're just laid out on their backs and they're stiff as boards. They're not dead, but they're stiff. And he's like, oh my gosh, we got to get out of here. And he tells the older guy, take off right now. And the older guy's like, what, what? I don't understand. And the captain's like, take off. And the older guy suddenly tenses up and passes out. And the captain starts to feel like he's going to tense up and pass out. So he moves toward the control panel and he barely grabs the takeoff lever as he passes out. But he does pull it and the ship takes off. So two days later, they slowly wake up and they have terrible hangovers, but everything seems to be just fine. So they're like, okay, what we need to do is get back to Earth. They call it Terra. They need to get back to Terra. So they set a course for Terra. The scientist comes upstairs and they have a little meeting where they're like, everything seems to be okay. 
The hamsters are running around. I think everything's fine. Let's just get back to Earth so we can tell them what happened. And she's like, I'm really tired. I'm going to go lay down. And he's like, okay, you go lay down. And he says to the elder guy, do you want to play cards? And he's like, sure do. And he pulls this deck of cards out that apparently he always has on him. So they sit down, they start playing cards, and the old guy just falls asleep. And the captain's like, well, that's weird. He never really falls asleep when we're playing cards. I guess, I guess I'm kind of tired too. I'm going to go lay down. So he goes to his quarters, and he goes in the bathroom, and he kind of starts washing up before he lays down. And he realizes that he doesn't have any fingernails. They're all gone. And he looks in the mirror, and his hair is falling out in clumps onto his shoulders. And he starts to kind of freak out, and he realizes that his body is kind of shriveling. And he's getting weak, and he stumbles out of his bathroom, and he starts heading down the corridor to where he left the old guy. And he's thinking to himself, I wonder if the old guy's doing this too. And he hears this scream from the room, and he's like, well, I guess he is. So he goes into the room. Sure enough, the old guy's going through the exact same thing. They realize that their teeth are falling out. And he's like, oh my gosh, I got to get down to the scientist because this is going to be the worst for her. I don't think we should call her. I think we should go down. But suddenly the screen comes on and she's not in the screen. Once again, 1953, of course, the author is really pointing out that we have video screens, but she's not in the screen. And he says, are, are you there? Are you all right? And she says, oh my gosh, I can see you. You're changing too. And he's like, it's okay. You don't have to show yourself. I know that this is much worse for you than it is for us men. And this is one thing that we kind of have to understand that we're reading a story from 1953. Of course, in her society, the only thing that she has of any value is her looks. So losing those is worse for her than it is for the men. Of course it is back then. Uh, and that's just part of the time period of the story that we're reading. So they begin to realize that their eyeballs are shrinking and that they can't see as well as they used to. And probably very soon, they're all going to be completely blind. But the captain, everybody starts freaking out because they're going blind, of course. But the captain starts feeling his clothing and he realizes that his other senses are beginning to compensate for not being able to see. And he's like, I have an idea. I want you, he's talking to the scientist downstairs, I want you to take an x-ray of your head and I want you to show it to us. And she's like, okay, and you hear her go stumbling over to the x-ray machine. She takes an x-ray, comes back, holds it up in front of the screen and he's like, I knew it. And the old guy's like, what? And he's like, we are not just randomly being torn apart by radiation. We are actually evolving. Whatever hit us from that asteroid, whatever weird radiation it was or whatever, it's making us evolve. It's not just giving us cancer and killing us. And the old guy's like, oh my gosh, you're right. I'm evolving. I am becoming a man of the future. I must go back to my cabin and think about this. And the captain's like, wait a minute. Um, why don't we just stay here and talk about it? And he's like, no, no, no. I can feel my cells mutating. I'm aware. And the captain's like, you're talking a lot smarter than you normally do. Uh, clearly your head is growing and your brain is growing and we are evolving. And he's like, yes, I must think about this. And he leaves and he goes back to his cabin to lay down and think. And the captain's like, I don't know. That didn't sound too good to me. Um, scientist, can you come up here? I want you to come up here and we need to talk about what we're going to do because I think we might have a problem with him. And she's like, I understand. And she puts on a space suit so that nobody can really see her. And she comes up and she comes into the room. And the captain's like, I think we need to destroy all of the guns. And I don't think we can go back to Earth. And she's like, why? And he's like, because 
when we get to Earth and they realize that we're evolved, they're going to want us to help them and we're going to want to help them. But they're going to resist as we give them ideas and things. And I think eventually we're just going to have to take them over and rule them. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's really bad. OK, we can't go back to Earth. And they start grabbing the guns and they're breaking the guns. And he comes back. And he's like, I can read your minds. I know what you're doing. I was the first one that was hit by the radiation. And this was a little weird to me because it is true. He passed out like one second before the captain passed out. And we actually don't know when the scientist passed out. So I was like, uh, I don't know about that. But he's like, I'm evolving faster than you. You guys are going to become like me. You just need to give it a tiny bit of time. And he's like, the captain's like, I'm not going to be like you. We're not going back to Earth. And he starts moving towards him. And the old guy holds up this disc that he made while he was back in his cabin. And he pushes, I don't know if he pushes a button on it. It, it just happens. Some smoke comes out of the end and it envelops the captain. And the captain is suddenly kind of in pain and he can't really move. And he's captured by this smoke. And the guy's like, we are going to rule humanity. We're going to make them the most powerful in the entire galaxy. Forget about the, the people that we have on Mars. And forget about the people we have on Venus. And forget about the people around Pluto. Uh, not Pluto. Um, Jupiter. Forget about those guys. The Terrans are going to rule the galaxy. And the captain's like, no, I'll never do it. And he tries to move towards him again, but he can't make it. And the scientist, the woman starts coming towards him and he hits her with more smoke and it kills her. And he's like, I figured something like this might have happened. Two of us can still do it. You need to make sure that we're steering towards Terra. And don't turn because I'll know if you do because I can read your mind. And I'm going to go downstairs and start preparing for our arrival. And he's like, no, I'll never help you. And the old guy's like, I guess you won't because I killed her and you clearly like her. So I figured this was possible too. I think I'm going to have to kill you. And right as he says that, these globes float through the walls of the spaceship from outside into the room that they're in. They're basically pure energy, these globes. And they float over the dead woman and they put this kind of red fire on her and it brings her back to life. And then they start floating towards the guy with the disc, the old guy. And he's like, no, no, stay back. And he shoots smoke at one of them. And it envelops it, but then the energy just absorbs the smoke and it keeps coming towards him. And he freaks out and he tries to get away and he falls backwards because, of course, they're really weak and shriveled, but their heads are gigantic, right? So he falls backwards and they disintegrate him. The globes just get rid of him. And then they turn around to the captain and... The captain's like, who are you? Where did you come from? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this must be the infinities. These must be like microbes that went to the asteroid a million years ago. And they've evolved into this pure energy form. And they're like trying to keep cosmic order. They're trying to keep balance in the galaxy. That's what I'm thinking, right, while I'm reading this. And... Uh, the globes are like, he was wrong. He was not affected first. We were affected first. And the captain's like, are you the hamsters? And they're like, we're the hamsters. <laughs> Which I loved. It was the craziest. Because it, I, I did not see it coming. I did not. I, I never thought while reading this story, I wonder if the hamsters are getting big heads. Right? <laughs> Uh, it was incredible, truly incredible. This would make an amazing Twilight Zone episode because it's got its goofy little twist. It's kind of scary at parts and super fun. So, okay, they're the hamsters. So they come floating up to him and they're like, we've talked about it and we've decided that it's best 
if we just put you back to normal. So they put their little fire on him and he turns back into his old self. They put their fire on her and she turns back into her old self. And then they leave. And they're like, we don't hold any ill will towards you, you know, for making us be your hamsters. <laughs> and they just leave. So he, of course, really likes her and she really likes him. And he's like, I'm so glad that you got your beautiful eyes back. And I'm so glad that you have your long, flowing brown hair back. And she's like, I'm so glad, too. Where are we going? And he's like, well, maybe we'll just go to a whole other galaxy. Who knows? But the hamsters were definitely right. This is better. And that's how it ends, right? Which is kind of silly. I don't know why they're not going back to Earth. I don't know why they're not warning the people of Earth that there's this crazy asteroid that nobody should go to because most likely it will kill them. But if not, it will make them evolve and then we'll all be ruled by these superhuman crazies. Uh, but it was so much fun. I really appreciate it. I felt like this story was pre-planned. And I know that's kind of a silly thing to say, but I feel like... He really thought about all the characters that were going to be in the story and what was going to happen to each of them and how we would find out about them and all that kind of stuff, which I really appreciated. I'm not a big stream of consciousness fan. You know, I, I don't want to read somebody's ramblings. I, I want to be told a story and I want to have a fun ending and... I really feel like this story did an excellent job of that. Uh, the science was fun. I really liked that there was this weird asteroid with no life, even though there really should have been life there. That was super cool. Uh, I enjoyed the philosophy of it, right? That these people were evolving and they were better than humans. And they really they really went into detail. This probably goes back to science. They really went into detail about how it's interesting that they weren't evolving differently. That everyone was evolving exactly the same. Which suggests that there must be something inside of us right now that will dictate how we're going to evolve in the future which was very interesting. Yeah, the philosophy was fun. The awe of space I thought was cool. I mean, when he starts pulling his teeth out and his eyeballs are shrinking, I mean, there's some crazy stuff that really gets you thinking about, wow, what's going on? This is a crazy story, right? It, it The awe was there, which was super cool. Heart, not so much, right? Um, these early stories, they're not really focusing on that, of course, you know, of course those two are in love, you know, and it ends with them being in love and flying off together to be Adam and Eve somewhere, I guess, which is crazy again, but, you know, so I guess he was trying to put it in there, but, you know, heart, it's not really the focus, it's kind of low in this story, but I'd probably give this thing an eight or a nine even, I really had fun with this. It was super enjoyable, and I'm really glad I read it. All right, well, that's really it for this. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. We have a ton of stuff and a ton of stuff planned for the future. So uh, make sure to subscribe and have a great day.